Thank you so much for joining us today um, on behalf of the Boston Run Show. We're so excited to see you in March. Um, and today we just wanted to give our viewers a little of what they could expect um, when you're on stage with us in March. So what are you most looking forward to at the Boston Run Show? Well, it's always a big thing when you come to Boston. <laughs> and the Boston Run Show is, well, the exhib exhibition is so amazing. The new stuff that is coming to come out, or what is an out, and be able to interact with people who have so much knowledge and be able to share, share whether it's a panel or looking at inventories. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to that, be able to just be there. And also people who want to be with coaching and everything and anything is there to be able to just get your advice. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, well, that's amazing. I mean, you've had such a storied career in Boston. It's exciting to welcome you back. Is there anything that you traditionally do when you return to the city? Well, when I go to the city, it's, uh, I have some restaurants that I go to, but usually I'm super busy. I don't have much time to explore, but I know, I know some friends have taken me to the water taxi and, you know, you drive the tour on the street and then you go to the, on the, on the water. And so it's, uh, oh, the, the, duck, duck tour. the duck tour is pretty cool. Um, you know, March might be a little, be a little chilly, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but also running, running the area. Um, I usually stay close to downtown by the finish line and be able to go by the uh, river is always good to be able to go. And yeah, I mean, love meeting people, whether it's a uh, first time or kind of, you know, been in Boston is they give you a high five or they take a double take like, what are you doing here? It's not a marathon <laughs> weekend or whatnot. So it's always fun to be able to be in Boston. Uh, but I have a couple, like I said, restaurants that I'm close by that I just room order to uh, order it to my room and then go in my room and eat it. Or sometimes I dine out there. Fabulous. I know. I think I've seen you for a high five on the Charles a few times, or I was probably doing the double take as well. So I know that a lot of people have followed your storied career, especially now that we're talking about Boston, your epic 2014 finish. Can you let, you know, now that you're sort of retired from marathons, um, can you let our runners know what you're doing now, what you're up to now? Well, people look at me and still think they I could compete. And then I know, my, I know. Absolutely, Meb. <laughs> you know, they always ask me whenever I'm a marathon, like you say, I was in Chicago, you like you were and. They're like, you're running, uh, you're going to win? I'm like, oh my gosh, I have no idea. <laughs> I respect the distance. Uh, I respect the marathon so much that um, somebody even asked me, Rich from the double MPD, he, he's running. He's like, oh, you should do New York. I'm like, New York is like three and a half, four weeks away. Not even, I'm like, there's no way I can do that. So I still run as a, on a daily exercise. I run about five you know, five days a week, about four miles, or if I feel good, I go six miles, but that's my daily routine and enjoy it. I mean, I think you get that. I get the high of being able to just run with people or run into people. People want to take a selfie or, you know, go with me for a mile or so. It's fun. And, but I also work on the Met Foundation, maintain excellent balance through health, education, and fitness for kids and be able to, you know, whether some of them need gears or um, school, back to school, programs backpacks or we give scholarships but also um you know some people just need motivation and then i i do that i like to visit schools at times when i can but also i run uh with ron dot i am a coach uh also online yeah um, i just have a few people who run really fast in berlin and tokyo my average my clients are not your elites i just want to help people accomplish their own destination whether it is to break three hours four hours or five hours so uh, um, I, they can have one-on-one -on -one with me, which I, where I talk to them 30 minutes uh, once a week. And then uh, Ron Dot, the predictive fitness will design the workout. And then we can uh, collaborate uh, of the workout and kind of what went right, what didn't go right. And then I can go there and modify it if I need to, or if some people get sick and you have to recalibrate, you know, the training of it, then I will get them back to the program. So it's been a lot of fun to be able to do that. And obviously I have, Three beautiful daughters that I try to not spend as much time as I can as well um, to be around at least if, if they choose to spend time with me it's great if not then <laughs> they, only, they need to I know kids right I have three myself so um, but they're little teenagers are tough teenagers is tough 
Yes. That's fantastic. I uh, I probably, I saw Run Dot on the course of the Chicago Marathon. They had a cheering section and maybe I should uh, sign up to get some help. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen a sub 340 map. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the thing is the hardest part I tell about people is getting your shoes on, go for a run. Then the second of the hardest part is it's not even, the coaching part is very important because it's just like, oh, I'm just going to run. Well, yeah, you can run. That's it's not that you know simple as that, but you can modify here and there, whether you implement a little bit of strides or implement some drills and long runs. Uh, you know, try, don't try to squeeze it in on the weekends and stuff like that. It's good to have collaboration. And you know, I so far I've been very successful with it. You know, I just had a guy run from three twenty to three oh three forty nine. 17 minute uh, PR and I'm pretty excited about that this weekend in Chicago and uh, and I had another lady who's since been working it's not her PR but since last time she ran she ran about 40 45 minute faster so it's uh those you know, are huge they're huge but it's gratifying for me because I just want to help people accomplish their thing and you know some some deal with injuries and things like that but or sickness or family situation so it's not you know have to adapt to that as well but it's fun to be able to work with people oh well that's that's incredible i mean i've always known you to be the runner that connects with the community and reaches out and is the dad so it's you're still very busy even though you're not racing no it's fun you know to be able to just 30 minutes i just kind of became friends and they you know just be able to just chat look forward to getting together to chat about running or family and things like that as i always one to connect with the runners, everyday runners. And and that has been very blessing to be able to just, you know, pick their brain there. And it's amazing what they do their profession. But at the same time, when they look for guidance and advice for running um, or nutrition or cross training or how to cut, up, cut off some time on their running. And that's, that's fun. So not to steal any of your tips and tricks, but for runners just starting out, um, and especially some of our runners that might be at the show that have never run before. Do you have, you know, three top pieces of advice you could share with them? Well, one of them is progressive. You know, you want to be able to just say, you know, you see us like, I can't do that. I can't do that. Don't say I can't. It's just kind of say, I, what can I do this week? Progressive this week, next week, next month. You know, even I ran, I was running today. I saw somebody who's very ultra, ultra marathon person. And then probably was like three and a half miles away from her house. And she was not, I can see that's not been herself. I said, don't worry, you're going to be there in three weeks. You know, now it's like tough challenge because you have to bring the stamina. We all have been there. It's like challenging, hard, difficult. Absolutely. And that's why I, I hate draining it, taking time out or shoulder season, time, time yeah. off. Because when you come back, it is it's stressful, but you got to trust in the process. You might be a little bit lethargic or sluggish at the beginning, but I'll give it three weeks or a week and a half, you got to start seeing the changes. So that's my advice to them. And then the other one is um, consistency. You know, are you going to meet somebody consistently? If you're going to do it yourself, and it, accountability is important. So if you're going to meet someone, you're going to be able to show up. If you don't, yeah. you're like, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it at the end of the week. And then, you know, you're not getting the mileage in. So in that way, I think those are the two things. There's progressive increments and then also consistency and you know, runners are tough, you know, at any conditions, you like, I don't want to do it. I, I don't know if I should go, you know, negative three degree. And then you see somebody else run. It's like, oh, we're, we're on the same page. <laughs> I know, know anytime I'm outside and I see a runner, I always think, oh, I should be out running. <laughs> yeah. You know, you give them thumbs up, you give them hello. And then you like, you know, you just really enjoy the moment with that, you know, it might be two of you, five of you running, but at the same time, that's big. Yeah. So it's been an incredible weekend. I mean, we just had um, Ruth break the world record for the women and we had the Paris Olympics earlier. Is there a standout moment for you in 2024? Oh, I mean, I think I was in Chicago. It's the first time I've ever been a world record pace or were in witness of, at least for the marathon or I don't think I've been any other uh, in the presence of a world record, you know, been the Olympics and things like that. But that's 2956 is it's crazy. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, I heard it. So no, I don't know if it was the shoes or what <laughs> else was going on, but I ran to 0956 twice and then to 0953. And I was uh, going to ask. At the right wrote, time. Yeah. <laughs> she ran, you know, I don't know if it's the same course or not course. T just to put in perspective is that 
Um, one, for one, she ran faster than I did at Chicago Marathon because my, my PR Chicago is 210.03, my second one ever in 2000, you know, 21 years ago. But again, you know, like with the Boston Marathon or New York City Marathon, she could probably have won some probably, I'm just making it, not making it up, but theoretically thinking probably like 60, 70% of the time. So the times is, is so it kind of puts in perspective but you know, it is what it is. I don't use the shoes, something else, or whatever it is. It's just people are running fast. People are running really fast. I was. But I was even... always a championship guy. I like just yeah. defend myself. <laughs> I was wondering, but your time at Boston was two oh nine, right? Like two oh eight thirty seven. Two oh nine thirty seven, and that course, you know, not taking away anything, but that course had some yeah, hills. Two oh eight thirty seven at the Boston Marathon, or stuff, or two oh nine. You know, thir- uh, 15 when I won New York City Marathon. I, you know, those are more championship style, not a pacemaker or a rabbit going. But, you know, everybody have different gifts. You know, she won it, I guess, last couple of years there as well. Not a couple of years, but twice already. So she, she's winning it and also running fast. And then you have to respect that. Yeah, no, it's fabulous. I uh, I think I was at maybe the halfway mark where I heard the announcement. Somebody was announcing it. And I, again, we're talking about double takes. I I said, did he just say 209? Um, so it was, yeah, it was a very exciting day. Yeah, I mean, and then John Career, just phenomenal. He's one of my brother's clients. And to be able to see that. And I know Wesley Career, his brother. His brother. Boston Marathon 2012. So I've been good friends with both of those guys. And the execute the way he did is just also incredible. It was fast day, fast day in Chicago yeah, this weekend. <laughs> it was a fast day, yeah. So I guess speaking about the majors, um, we kind of came on talking a little bit earlier that potentially maybe you might finish your six your six star. Is that yeah. in the books? <clears throat> I guess yeah. I mean, uh, I do have two races left. You know, instead of six stars, it might be seven stars next year. I don't know. <laughs> Could be an announcement soon. <laughs> I, I have Berlin and Tokyo that I have not done. Um, I've been in Tokyo before for, not for that race, for a relay team for the United States twice. I love running there. Road races is big, it's humongous in, in Japan in general. And one of the things that I probably look back is I wish I did more racing in Japan because I know there's so much into it. And Berlin, you know, I think it'd be cool flat as a pancake. My friends always tell me, you know, you should do that. So I do, try to break... Um, Fast time, 205, 206, but I always felt with New York, my relationship with New York World Runners is much more stronger. So I decided not, not to pursue that, but it'd be, it'd be fun to do those or even other ventures or destination points that I like to go. But it'd be nice to, unlike you, I, I have to finish the six stars, but I, from our earlier conversation, you go number three. That's pretty incredible. It was pretty epic day yesterday. It was fun. I'm not running them very competitively, but... Um... Finishing the third six star. It was fun. It was Chicago was just a fab day. That's awesome. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Well, I hope to see you in Berlin or Tokyo. Um, and then finally, um, you know, if I can close with a couple of fun questions um, for you, um, we'll do a minute to win it, Meb. So right. when you're in Boston, what's your must have meal? I, Grill 23 is what I have been to, but also been, uh, which is steak place. And then I've been to the Thai place right on Newberry Street, I think, uh, uh, Thai place. Thai, Thai and steak. Okay. What's your favorite thing to do in Boston when you return besides the duck tour? Honestly, I love meeting people, um, whether it's at the finish line or the hotel lobby, Fairmont Copley. People always, you know, I can't go up. I got to go sneak in through the alleys and sometimes it's so busy in Boston, but I love meeting and greeting people. It's, it's part of my nature. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, what I love to do when I'm in Boston. That's awesome. Uh, it might be a New England thing, but iced coffee in the winter, yes or no? Definitely not. I'm always 90 degree, always having hot. I don't think I had it once in my life, probably like iced tea or couple. I always have hot tea, no matter how hot it is. So I'm always, and that, you know, in, in New England, I need extra, extra hot in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> especially <laughs> in March. Yeah, especially in March. Okay, the age-old debate, yes or no, pineapple on pizza? A pizza. Pineapple on it. Pineapple? Yeah, as okay. a topping. It's good. Okay. So oh, pineapple. Good. oh, yeah, yeah, the pineapple pizza is like Hawaiian or whatever. Yeah, yeah. like Hawaiian. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have that before. Good, we're on the same page. And then finally, other than the marathon, 
what Olympic event would you compete in? Other than the marathon, what? Track and field, you mean? Oh, it could be any. Your choice. I, I, I would love to do soccer. I mean, I love soccer. I think it would be fun to do soccer because uh, I, I have the stamina, so I could be yeah. running around. Not <laughs> you could run circles around everyone. <laughs> I just got to get that agility right, you know? But it's just, you know, a relay is good, and that's what I think it brings, soccer. You pass on, you have to expect what that person is going to do, whether to go ahead or drop back so they can pass you the ball and then be able to uh, give it back to them or try to score. No, oh. well, I mean, you've always been a team player. So, um, even though you're an individual sport, I know you've always supported everyone. So this was fantastic. It was great to have you on today. I imagine you have some athletes in run dot or especially it's big with the Meb foundation in New York, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was my foundation. We had about, I think 17 runners at my foundation in New York. And, uh, I did not have, well, I do have one athlete that she's running in, uh, in 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 New York and then quite a bit of uh, friends that are running for the Met Foundation. And I just do the Zoom call with them. Um, part of the running for the Met Foundation is to do at least give them advice a month out, what to do, what not to do, uh, tra training tips, but also send them a book and uh, on behalf of the Met Foundation. So yeah, looking forward to having some of those runners, but also an athlete from Ron Dot, uh, Ron Dot, the New York City Marathon. Well, it's fast approach approaching. I wish them all the best of luck. And thank you so much for joining us today on the best, um, for the Boston Run Show. Thanks for having me. It was fun. I am just going to 